Hey, people of planet Earth. I'm not going to waste your time. Let's start looking at these 12 energy weapons. I've got them listed on screen right now. You know how this works. Which of these 12 mods is the best? Definitely the Zap Gun mod. Trust me, this weapon is incredible. It's what the laser musket should have been in the first place. Download it and you won't have any regrets. In second place, if you absolutely need something that's more lore friendly, I would also highly recommend the Watts 3000 laser gun, which also has tons of customization and great animations. You can't go wrong with either of these weapons. Those are my recommendations, now let's look at all of these mods in detail. Our first mod today is the AEP-7 laser pistol and Pew Pew. As we all know, Fallout 4's laser pistol is actually just a cut down version of the laser rifle, but this mod adds back the classic laser pistol from Fallout 3. And because it requires munitions, it also brings back the energy cell ammo that also didn't make it into Fallout 4. If you don't like munitions, there is a patch to remove it as a requirement. The AEP-7 is injected into leveled lists and has four unique variants. At Scrap Palace, you can find the titular Pew Pew laser pistol, which only holds two shots but does a lot more damage. On the Pridwin, next to Proctologist Tegan, you can find Colonel Autumn's laser pistol. In the Castle Tunnels, you can find a laser pistol called Smuggler's End. And finally, at Poseidon Energy, you can find the AEP-9 prototype, which fires a green laser. Wow. This mod also replaces the Protectron's gaze weapon from Automatron, so actually make that five unique weapons. I can't find any faults with the model, and I love the bouncy animations this pistol has. In third person, power armor, the reload is messed up, but the weapon does function properly, which you really can't take for granted. And apparently there are plans to add third person power armor animations at some point in the future. The AEP-7 has a good variety of attachments. You can unfold the stock, choose between four boosted ammo types that do more damage. You can add a reflex sight, a beam focuser, select one of ten capacitors, which are basically receiver upgrades, and choose between automatic or recycler fire modes. The unique Pew Pew pistol has its own sarsaparilla splitter attachment, but loses the automatic fire mode and reflex sight option. The AEP-9 prototype can't use a reflex sight either, but is otherwise the same. My opinion on this mod is very positive overall. I would say it's the third best weapon on this list after the Zap Gun and our second mod, the Watts Laser Gun. The Watts 3000 is injected into leveled lists and has five unique variants. At the ATFL HQ, you can find a unique called Urban Watts. In the Institute's Advanced Systems Lab, you can find the WTZ I06 prototype. Among the otherwise useless treasures of Jamaica Plain, you can find a variant called Liberator. Another variant called Ad Victorium can be found inside Recon Bunker Theta. And at this vertebrate wreckage in the Glowing Sea, you can find an Enclave Plasma variant called the Disintegrator. The model looks very detailed, and it features excellent looking custom animations. Unfortunately, this weapon has the exceptionally common first person power armor footsteps bug. Luckily, there is a patch available that fixes the issue. In third-person power armor, the Watts uses vanilla laser rifle animations, which don't fit at all, but as long as you're not paying too close attention, it looks okay. At the weapons workbench, we can select 10 different capacitors, 8 barrels, 7 stocks, 15 sights, 7 paint jobs, and semi or full auto fire. So, there's not a whole lot of attachments, but the attachments that do exist have a large effect on the weapon's capabilities. You can convert it into a pistol, a sniper rifle, or even a fully automatic laser shotgun. There's a reason I recommended this weapon, it's really damn good. Today's third mod brings back a classic heavy plasma gun from Fallout 1, 2, and New Vegas, the Winchester P94. This mod has two main files, I downloaded the balanced version from 2019. This weapon has no uniques, but it does have an upgraded Mark II variant that can be found on enemies or sold in stores. So yes, this weapon has leveled list integration, but unfortunately it's been done by directly editing the leveled lists rather than a scripted method, so watch for possible conflicts. The weapon actually has a pretty okay looking model, but the sounds are horrible. Why does an energy weapon use the sounds of a railway rifle? It also uses minigun animations, so it has to spin up for a second before slowly shooting out its plasma projectiles. It looks really strange, but because these animations are from the vanilla game, there are no problems in third person or power armor. Other than it looking completely stupid. Look at the reload animation, you're clearly reloading nothing into nowhere. When it comes to attachments, there's only three that work. One turns the weapon into a plasma flamethrower. 
and another makes the plasma bolts fly faster, and there's a scope you can make out of broken glasses. The other attachments have broken requirements and thus cannot be attached. Yeah, this weapon is trash. Avoid at all costs. Our fourth mod is another take on the Winchester P94 called Plasma Caster Standalone. This mod's assets are installed as loose files, which leaves a bad impression right off the bat. The weapon does at least have scripted leveled list injection, although there's no unique variants. The Plasma Caster adds its own new ammo type, Plasma Cores, which can be crafted at a chem lab or found on enemies or in shops. In comparison to the previous mod, this weapon has an ugly, blocky appearance and basic texture work. The animations are still vanilla, but this time from the Gatling laser, and they look a lot better. As for attachments, this weapon has 16 different capacitors, two barrels, a rubber grip, a lighter handle, a reflex sight, a few dozen decal textures, 31 different material options that will literally make the game stutter when you switch between them because the mod uses loose files, and a high-speed electrode. So the customization isn't so bad with this weapon. Honestly, it's a mixed bag overall. There's some good, but a lot of bad. In the end, I would have to recommend staying away from this mod, but if you are going to use it, make sure to pack it into a BSA. Next up is the AER-15 Modern Laser Assault Rifle. It has two unique variants. One is the AER-15Z1, which can be found on Rosalind Orman in the Institute Advanced Systems Laboratory. The other is called Paladin's Resolve, which can be found inside the Brotherhood Recon Theta Bunker. This weapon has scripted level list injection. When you start the game, a menu pops up asking you where the weapon should be distributed. It can also be crafted at a chem lab, along with an ingestible to control the weapon's advanced features, which I'll go over later. I like how this weapon looks, but its design definitely doesn't fit the Fallout series art style for energy weapons. Strangely, the AER-15 has no recoil at all, which feels especially strange since there is still visible recoil in third person. The custom animations look good, but the weapon has the first person power armor footsteps bug. Thankfully there is a fix for the issue. In third person power armor, the weapon uses vanilla animations. So what about those advanced features? Well, if you use the ingestible or set a hotkey in the MCM, you can switch from semi to full auto, or adjust the wavelength of the gun, which is a trade-off between damage and rate of fire. You can also adjust scope zoom, but this option will crash the game if you don't have see-through scopes installed. For attachments, there are 7 emitters, 3 barrels, 2 beam modifiers if you use the West Tech barrel, 2 grips, 10 scopes, but remember they will not function properly unless you use the see-through scopes mod, four foregrips, two pistol grips, five skins, four tactical attachments, aka flashlights and laser pointers, six stocks, and nine wavelengths. Overall, this is a pretty cool weapon. Our sixth mod is by the same author as the last, and it's called X12 Plasma Caster. Make sure to download this mod's update file, and I'd also recommend grabbing the 2K receiver texture for lower end systems. This weapon has scripted level list injection, but no unique variants. Like the previous mod, when you start the game, a menu appears that allows you to choose how this weapon gets placed into level lists. And it can be crafted at a chem lab, along with a similar ingestible that controls this weapon's advanced features. This weapon looks great, but it's not that much more congruent with the game's art style. The custom animations look incredible, and amazingly there's even animations in third-person power armor. Unfortunately, the double footsteps bug is still present, but there is a patch to fix the issue. As for the advanced features, there is scope adjustment, which has no risk of crashing the game this time, fire mode switching, turning off the laser sight and flashlight, and most interestingly, swapping to an underbarrel grenade launcher. For attachments, we have six receivers, two magazine sizes, four scopes, this time not requiring see-through scopes, an underbarrel grenade launcher module, eight barrels, including shotgun and targeting barrels, 11 stocks, a laser, and a flashlight. I really like this weapon, it's a lot better than the previous mod. I would say it's probably the fourth best on this list. That's high praise, I know. Our seventh mod is another one's Laser RCW Reborn. This weapon has leveled list injection, but make sure to grab its update file or the weapon will appear far too commonly on enemies. The RCW also has one preplay spawn at Sentinel Sight Prescott, near a dead soldier. This is the only ESL flagged weapon on this list, so that's nice. The model and texture are great, and I'm a huge fan of the custom animations, but I don't understand why the weapon has zero recoil, considering the animation clearly shows recoil is happening. 
Additionally, this weapon has the double footsteps bug in power armor, and there is no fix this time. In third person power armor, it uses submachine gun animations, which are acceptable. For attachments, there are three receivers, two of which change the magazine into a drum mag that has a different animation. Three barrels, five grips, 16 scopes, damage cheats, two materials, three iron sights, and nine stocks. In the end, this is a good weapon if you don't care about power armor. Our eighth mod is another laser RCW called Laser RCW, an energy submachine gun from New Vegas. This weapon has no unique variants, but it does have scripted level list injection, much like the last mod. This weapon's mesh, though, is incredibly low poly. Everything that should be rounded off looks hexagonal instead, as if the modeler was working within the constraints of a PS2 game. The weapon uses submachine gun animations, but it's clear they don't make a good fit. This weapon has very few attachments, only three receivers, two stocks, a glow sight or reflex sight, a compensator, and a suppressor. That's it. This gun stinks, let's move on to another laser RCW called PBW, the laser RCW. This is another mod that requires munitions and the leveled item framework to work. It uses the same electron charge pack ammo it did in New Vegas. This weapon has leveled list injection, as well as one unique version called Prototype Core RCW that can be found in this locked room in Watts Electronics. The unique uses fusion cores as ammo, but can't be modified at a workbench. In terms of appearance, this looks much better than the previous mod, but not as good as another one's RCW. It uses submachine gun animations, which is kind of disappointing, but at least the animations actually fit the weapon properly this time. The attachments are quite bare bones on this weapon. Four receivers, four barrels, three stocks, an extended magazine, and five sighting options. Ultimately, none of these three laser RCWs appeal to me, but I would say this is the best of the bunch, especially for someone already using munitions. Tenth up is my recommended mod, the Zap Gun, a makeshift laser weapon. It's injected into leveled lists, but there's a patch if you don't want that. It can also be crafted at a chem lab. There's one unique version called the Kinetic Magnetron Disruptor, which does little damage but sends enemies flying into the air. This unique can't be modified at a workbench, sadly. As a neat little bonus though, this mod adds three turret zap guns that can be built to defend your settlements. This is a very good looking, detailed makeshift weapon, and it has excellent custom animations for first person. The weapon works perfectly in first person power armor too, with no footstep issue. In third person, it uses pipe pistol animations both in and out of power armor, which look alright as long as you're not looking too closely. The attachments number 10 capacitors, 6 firing tubes, 4 grips, 3 magazines, 7 sight options, a bayonet, beam focuser, and beam splitter. That might not sound like a lot, but it's enough to turn this weapon into all sorts of configurations from flamethrower to sniper rifle to laser shotgun. This weapon is incredible. Like I said in my intro, this is what the laser musket should have been in the first place. Our second to last weapon is the recharger gun. It has no unique variants and has not been integrated into leveled lists. Considering this weapon relies on a potentially faulty script to handle its recharging ammo, this omission may very well be a blessing in disguise. The recharger gun replaces the vanilla limitless potential laser rifle unique from University Point, so you'll have to go there to acquire it. The model looks nice, and I like how the vacuum tubes light up when you shoot. There's no need to reload with this weapon, it regenerates its ammo slowly. I have noticed sometimes the firing animation can play even with no ammo left, and people have reported that the ammo can randomly stop regenerating after some time. I didn't experience this bug personally though, it might only manifest itself after a long time. For attachments, it has 10 capacitors, 3 barrels, a pistol grip or rifle stock, 3 magazine sizes, 10 sighting options, a beam focuser, and 6 paint jobs. I like this gun a lot, but I think engine limitations put a lot of restrictions on what could be done with it. Still, this is a solid replacer for a lackluster vanilla weapon. Our 12th and final energy weapon is Aquila, laser rifle. This weapon has no unique variants, nor leveled list integration. It can only be found south of the Greater Mass Blood Clinic on the corpse of these renegade dicks that live in this bunker. After acquiring this weapon, I wasn't too impressed by its blurry textures, stock laser rifle sound, and vanilla plasma rifle animations. I guess its appearance is okay. Its attachments consist of two condensers, four barrels, two laser colors, eight sight options, damage modifiers, scope reticles, you can add legendary modifiers, there's nine skins, and three power modules. 
This weapon is mediocre. I wouldn't use it, but it isn't terrible. Alright, that's all the energy weapons I have to show off for today. I hope this video helps you find some good mods and avoid downloading the digital equivalent of raw sewage. Until next time...